Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and I make coding videos. In this video, I would love to walk you through that there are certain platforms which are challenging the traditional route of building the applications and especially on the backend side. You have already seen a lot of backends in Java, JavaScript, Express, uh, Next.js and a whole bunch of things. But there are a few new players in the market which are challenging this traditional way of developing the backend. And I'm super excited, super interesting in them. One such player is Moshia, which was also trending a few days ago on the GitHub. And I recently created a video about exploring their platform and their philosophy of building. In this video, together, for the very first time, I want to build an application with them. What it's like to build or initiate an application, what kind of a code files they generate, and how does it look like to have the very basic app. I did one such video for the Next.js as well when the Next.js came out, and I was super happy that I was learning along with you. I want to repeat this again. Maybe this is going to be the next, another Next.js, uh, but for the backend, but I would love to explore with that. So with that, let me take you onto the screen and together let's explore this Vercel but for backend known as Moshia. And here is the first website. And yes, of course, just like Next.js, they also give you this nice button at the very front. But what I want to do is I want to go in the docs and I want to see what it's like. So they have this getting started. Welcome to Moshia. All right, that's good. That's good. We have already explored this part, most of it. And yeah, this is my favorite part that I can just build application in whatever the language I want. But where I am interested in this particular video is quick start. So what it's like to create uh, the very first application, by the way, you can copy the markdown and open this up into a lot of things, even T3 chat, I give you for that, <laughs> didn't even thought of that. So yeah, they are very generous in that. But what I want is I would love to copy this. I already have this VS Code set up in the Chai theme. And let's go ahead and see what it's like to have this one. All right, fingers all crossed and let's see Okay, so Moshia, yes, I would like to proceed. Couple of questions. Hopefully it will ask. No questions. Ask some questions. It doesn't do anything. All right, I'll wait for it. And I really like these kinds of raw videos where we together explore what's happening, what's not happening, how much time it's taking. All right, so, all right. So a couple of questions. So what template would you like to use? You can use your base as Python and base as TypeScript. I am, I'll prefer to go with the TypeScript, maybe another video for Python, but this time we'll choose this one. And it says uh, project name, leave blank to use current folder. I'll not give them. I'll just call this one as my Moshia app. I think that would be good. But if I just leave this, I think this will populate my current folder. That would be better instead of creating a folder inside a folder. So I'll just leave this as blank. I think that would be better. Proceed. Yes, of course. Please do that. All right. So we have a lot of configuration folder and even a cursor folder is being created. I like that. They are going really forward. Uh, yes, please access whatever you need. All right. So it says dependency installed, flow default created, steps I would love to explore what do you all create and how it is going on. So let's go ahead and have a deep dive. All right, so cursor, of course you have a lot of cursor, API docs and stuff, instruction, good stuff. Node modules, no need to go inside that. First, let's see what's package.json, how does it look like? Name, current folder, okay, description, nothing. Script, we have post install script, which is Moshi install. We have dev, dev debug, generate types, build clean, good stuff. And uh, really interesting to see Mermaid as well here. Then we have keyword, dependency, not much, Moshi, and by default they go with the Zod, so they do care about the type safety as well. Of course, it's TypeScript. So TypeScript node, nothing too drastic, and it comes up with the default types of React, but not React. Interesting stuff. And we have TypeScript node, that's okay. Now let's see what's there in the TS config. Standard. Uh, types we do have. I don't think so. We need to worry too much about this. This is okay part. And this is what happens when the first time you see the application. This is the learning journey. And I'm totally believing that you will also appreciate this. A lot of time tutorials are just, hey, just walk me through. I'll give you the explanation. This is for the first time we both are learning together. I think this is the best part of it. 
Then we have this Moshia workbench. Okay, so there are steps which is noob step TS, some X and Y coordinate, source, handle, position, right? So I think they are plotting something. This is exactly for that. We will see that when we'll run the application because a lot of things get clear when you run the application. And as they say that whole of their journey is on the steps, in case you don't know that, uh, let me take you back onto this. If you read a little bit in their manifesto, they actually mention this uh, front here that we declare the step is our core primitive. So they actually ship the core primitive as steps. Okay, so these are the steps, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 steps TS, TSX, then we have the step TS. I think this is for exactly the React and this is the one. So we don't have much of them. We have the step one as API step, then we have test state step and the check state step. Okay, let's explore each one of this file. Noob step don't hold any logic in the code. They are a way to create custom nodes for flows on the workbench and represent external states such as human in the loop. Hmm, nice. I would love to run this to see that what happens. Let's see, <laughs> we forgot to check the docs. <laughs> so we need to check the docs again. And quick start. This is what I've done. And now it says npx Moshia dev. All right, let's go ahead and use this npx Moshia dev. So this is what the documentation mentioned. I don't need to go in the folder. I was little smart there. Okay, and this is how we are going to see something. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's go up here, npx run, Moshe dev. All the flows are being created and we should be technically listening on this port. It's been long that I've seen this port. Usually it's localhost. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting one here. So we have the tracing. Ah, you need to see this. So there we go. So we have this whole thing. And by the way, some other stuff is running up. I'll close that. <laughs> so we have tracing logs and the states. And we have these endpoints being defined. We just have the default template as of now. And warning, light mode coming up. There we go. I'll not keep it. So if I start this flow, uh, let's click on the start flow. I think this is the API trigger, which actually triggers this and this sets any changes up here. So I can see the whole flow of how the endpoints and how the steps are being created. Can I minimize this? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. All right, I can change this, change this, and ooh, that's nice. Oh, nice zoom and stuff is also there. So probably I should be able to change them. All right, looks good. I need to read more on the docs that what's happening. Key test, welcome to Moshia, state change. Oh, so the every time I was clicking on it, it was actually looking on this one. Hmm. So let me go ahead. It, it was logging all the time and stuff. If I click this again, yep. It actually matches the state value. Key is test, welcome to Moshia. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and explore how the documentation and steps looks like. I think the good point, just a gut feeling is zero one step. All right, so it says API route config and the handlers. These are imported from the Moshia itself. And then we have API route config, which where we have to config. Uh, the type is API and the name is trigger. What more type do you have? is just the type API as of now. At least the suggestions are saying one. The good thing is TypeScript, so I can rely a lot on the suggestion. And just like you can see in here, if I just remove this and hit this, notice here, all the suggestions are there. So I'm relying on that. So the name is API trigger. The description is default template API trigger. I think this is the one that is there. Let's see. And then we have the API step. This emits a test state. Can I emit something else? I would check that. Then the body is schema, which says the message, the string, expected request body for type checking, good stuff. Let me check this. And this is how you learn. Then we have a handler, which takes a couple of parameters. The first one is request, and then we have logger, emit, and trace ID. And then we can use the logger to trace this step zero, processing API, and the body request. Did we saw something like that? 
did we saw? Yep, we have state change, the API trigger, step one processing API. So I think this is exactly coming up from here. And then we have the step. We don't have anything inside the body. This is exactly where it's coming up. And we also emit an event so that I guess another event can pick it up. So emit events to the topic to process asynchronously. That's nice. So topic is the test state and the data that you probably can pass on and then return back to the client. So whoever the client is requesting, we can actually return them and let it go. And this is the part which probably goes to the next step, event, emit events to the topics to process asynchronously. Good. Let's go into the test state step. This is the second one. All right. So this is a type event. This is event config. What was the previous one? The previous one was the API route config and this is the event config. How many options we have here? Just one. So event config, you have to mention it always as event. Then we have the name, description. This step subscribes to the event test state to be processed asynchronously. So we have to subscribe to a test state. All right. So we are subscribing to an event test state which is coming up from the previous step or any step maybe because you are subscribed. So it doesn't need to come from the previous one. It can come from anyone. As long as this event is emitted, I'll start working. And this one also emits a check state change. So anybody can actually subscribe just by writing this. But this needs to go into the event config uh, configuration. Fairly understandable. And this is in reality how you understand a fresh new technology. I have never made this kind of videos, but this is how the struggle goes up. You go into the docs, you create the fresh project, you put up your theories, test them out, you fail with them, you work with them, and this is how it works. This is obvious, and this is the portion where your existing knowledge overlaps. So I have worked quite a lot with the Zod. So those knowledge from React or Next.js, this overlaps, so this makes life a little easier. But this is the first time that we are seeing all of this. So we have the flows, now default. Do we have more of the flows? The flow this step belongs to we will be available in the workbench. Okay. And this is the handler. I guess handlers are handlers. This is where you write your business logic. Avoid using console log. Use logger instead. So they have their own logger. And this is where you mention. And I think we also hit this. So this is the step two where we change the step. Pushing message content to the state. Right now we have, don't have anything in the input. But we could have something here. All right. So persist content on the state and then we are also emitting the event which is check state change and the data we are seeing key as test expected message. All right. Fair enough. Let's go into the next one. And then we also see this here again the same event. We are checking the state change. Anything you can change. You subscribe for an event. You can also emit, emit any event. You validate your input and then you can mark this into a flow so that it's available in this workbench. All right. In the default, because there could be other, I just noticed there could be many workbenches up here. Good enough. And then we simply see the handler, which check the uh, check for the state change. And then you write the logic here. And there we have the values. We fetch the values. If the la value is not as expected, I guess this is the straightforward business logic. So what I've understood as a conclusion as of now, there are a couple of key interesting points and then I jump into the docs to validate my theory. So there are two major things. The first one is somebody is hitting the endpoint. So there is API route config. And after that, once we have hit the API endpoint, what do we want to do comes under the event config or event configuration. You can actually subscribe to any event and also as well as you can emit any event. So rest of the things is abstracted from us. They said rightly about the framework. This is a framework. So we can subscribe to any event and can emit any event and any of the step can actually subscribe and event emit the events there. And then all of them also gets a handler that what you really want to do. So you simply do export const handler and handlers then handle this part here. So set change. This is what we are taking and this is where we write the business logic. All right, fair enough. Let's also dive deep into this one that how this is. This is basically just the React nodes. So what you see here, this is known as the nodes. So I think these are being created. This is a standard React stuff. 
don't need to dive much into this. And this is where I configure my application to call this one as slash defaults. The flows is going to be default. Uh, good enough, fair enough stuff in here. All right, let's check a couple of more things. Now this one makes sense that we have the steps where on X and Y location they will be there, target all of that, so how they are working on. This configuration file is making sense now. Let's jump into the docs part, how that is there. All right, so this is the project structure. We can go ahead and check this. And this is the project structure. So they say the basic project structure will be like your project, then you have the steps. It could be API gateway and then the processor, self notification, anything like that. And we have the custom UI steps as well. Fairly, fairly simple project structure. I was expecting much more file than this, but turns out it's actually not that hard. And we have automatic step discovery. I like that. I don't have to do this stuff. Discovery rules. I really, really need to go and dive deep into this. Also, they have the naming con file naming convention as well. I need to study that so that I can give you a gist of it, summary of it. Uh, I love doing that things because I go dive into the documentation, take everything that they have to offer, and then bring out a short guide for you to actually understand and get into this. So I think, hope you understood the process of how we do the things. And yes, each of the new framework that I dive in, this is what it takes. I create the project, then dive into it, explore the files, put up my theories, match this theory with the docs. And now what I'll do is for the next two hours, three hours, whatever it takes, I'll be diving into their docs yeah, line by line and we'll extract the information, we'll make my notes. And then probably in the next video, I'll come back and we'll explain to you and we'll build together a sample project. It will be basic, but it will actually uh, kind of validate our theories, whatever we have made so far, because these frameworks are new. Nobody is an expert here except the creators. So we need to put out our theory, join their discord and go and work with them that how it is going like. So technically you are for the first time seeing what it takes behind the scene to explore a framework and learn with that. I hope you are enjoying these raw format because I think nobody does that on the YouTube itself. And for this, I highly, highly would appreciate if you will drop some comment that, hey, we love this behind the scene. And in the next video, together, we are going to explore a simple to do kind of application with this that what possibly can be a really bare minimum application with Moshia. That is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.